Okay. Now, let me quickly talk about the general structure of our script file. In general, we need to have the following commands in the R script file. Okay. First is this RM function, okay, which is used to remove or active objects in our environment, if any. Okay. Of course, um, under a circumstance that you want to remove uh, those objects. So for example, I highlight this line, I hit run, it's gonna clear out, you see that? Uh, the objects actually clear out all the objects in the global environment, okay? And the second uh, line usually we have, or second function usually we have is set WD, standing for set working uh, direct Tree. As the name uh, suggests, the function of, of this um, function, and the goal of this function is to set the working directory of the project. And quite often, um, we use a single folder to uh, store the files, data files we want to read uh, into uh, our environment. I want to save the uh, output, including graphs and data and log files into the same uh, working directory, the folder, uh, because we want to put everything together when we work on a single project, right? We, we don't want to have all the files scattered around in different uh, folders. So here, by setting this working directory, which is under D, teach, slash, uh, BSU teach new slash social, 686, uh, we make agreement with uh, our studio, uh, our environment that uh, we're gonna read all the files, if any, from that folder. And if we're gonna save any uh, files, we're gonna save to that folder at the top level of directory. So social 686 is gonna become the top level of, of file path we're gonna begin with next, okay? And next, function we got to have in the uh, R script usually is the sync, sync function. The sync function creates a log file, okay, uh, to uh, have a record of what we plan to do and the results produced from uh, what we want to do, okay? or the functions that uh, we have in that, uh, uh, in this R script file. Okay, and in the middle, we have all our functions to uh, clean the data, to read the data, analyze data, et cetera. And at the very bottom of this R script file, we gotta have sync uh, beginning parenthesis and ending parenthesis two to end the log file. So you remember we just used the log file, the sync, right? To open a diversion file to have a record of what we plan to do and uh, the results. And now after all the middle part, okay, at the very bottom, we gotta have this sync function, parenthesis and empty parenthesis, just to tell our that we're gonna end the log file, okay? And here, uh, I can execute this R script line by line. So I move the cursor to the first line, to the first active line here, and I hit the run button, and it's gonna go through line by line, okay? And uh, okay, uh, once we hit the end of this R script, what we can do is we can uh, go to uh, the log file we specify in the sync function, uh, in the first sync function, in, in, in the beginning sync function, okay? And that's where all the uh, output uh, is uh, contained. And the split option here, argument, is to request R to 
spit out uh, results uh, in the interactive console. At the same time, it's going to divert the results to this log file. Okay, log file. And this log file is saved under, you know, first is to begin with the, the lowest level of the working directory. Okay, that is social 686. And we begin from there uh, is PRGN standing for program. So the program is under social 686 and the log file is saved under D slash teach slash BSU teach new slash social 686 slash PRGN slash. Okay. And we can open that file. Okay. So it's it's um, this file, right? What but the problem with this file is that it only contains the output without any commands that we just issue. Okay. So ideally, we want to have both commands and output. So how to remedy this problem here? Well, the problem the remedy is to have this source function, which I um, already uh, spelled out. Uh, at the very beginning of this R script file, it is silenced or commented out by this pound, pound sign. Okay, pound sign begins a line of comment. Okay? That is anything after the pound sign uh, going to be uh, taken as text by R. So R won't execute uh, that line as as any R function or commands, etc. So, uh, and here um, we can see all the blue lines uh, that's uh, superimposed on the darker blue background, right? They're all uh, read as comment by R. So here I copy this line, right? Except the punk sign copy and paste it here, right? And uh, this part specify the location of, of R script happens to be this R script file, right? Or gotta be this R script file, right? So this R script file actually sit under D teach, BSU teach new slash social 686 PRGM slash CDA lab 00.R. And we have two additional arguments. One is echo is true. Echo is true when it is set to true. Then after we execute this command, okay, uh, then both commands and output gonna show up in an interactive console. Okay, max d parse dot length equal to 10,000, it sets the maximum length of file. Okay, usually it is enough for kind of average, uh, average uh, length, kind of, uh, you know, uh, for uh, script. So this argument sets the maximum uh, length for uh, R script file. Uh, so here it's 10,000, which should be enough for uh, script files with average length, with average length. Um, and the same time, the same time, so the remedy it provides is that if you remember, if we uh, execute this part only without source it, then the sync function Going to only produce a log file that has the output only without the commands. Okay? But executing this source file in an interactive console, what is source? It sources uh, this R script. Okay? Then it not only uh, spits out commands and outcome in the interactive console, but also sends the commands. Excuse me, saves the commands and output to the log file specified in the first sync function. Okay.
who is C. Let, let's execute this uh, command and see what's going to happen. So this line, right? This line we just had uh, executes all the lines in R script in a batch mode that is with one shot and uh, produces, a, you know, uh, results too, right? So it shows both commands and results and the commands all begin with this, uh, uh, the limiter, right? Uh, the greater sign and the uh, outcome here. And we can go to uh, our uh, a working directory, that is D teach, VSU teach new slash social 686 program, and open that file, log file again, see what's in there, right? And uh, we have a log file now containing both commands. Okay. Uh, delimited by this greater sign and output. Okay. So a quick review of the structure of uh, our script. We have rm remove function to remove any um, active objects that we don't want to have there in the memory, okay? Well, if we want to have those objects, of course we can retain We don't have to have this command there. And then set WD to set the working directory and uh, the sync function. The first sync function uh, opens a diversion link, okay? To uh, create a log file to save uh, functions and outputs to follow. Okay. Then in the middle part are uh, our functions to uh, reading, manage, clean, analyze data. And the very bottom one of sync function to close the log file. And do remember, okay, we got to have a source uh, function. And uh, copy and paste into the interactive console execute this uh, R script in the batch mode. Okay. And we gotta have echo and uh, max arguments there uh, so that we can make sure that uh, 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 we can see output and commands in the interactive console. At the same time, it'll make sure that the log file contains both commands and functions and output. Okay. 